and a very distinguished audience. I want to believe that in this hall, we have a cross representation of the media, civil society organizations, and accredited observers of the election. The, let me start by welcoming you and also apologizing for, let me go straight to the crux of this conversation. For us, this stakeholders meeting is in recognition of the very important, very important rules that these three set of groups play in ensuring that our elections remain free, fair, and credible. We recognize the very strategic roles that the media play in not only ensuring accurate reportage, but also holding stakeholders in the electoral space accountable. We also recognize the very important role that the civil society organizations are playing in educating voters, raising the stakes, and making sure that this, the, the entire process remains credible. We also cannot underestimate the very significant and oversight roles that the election observers and monitors play. Sometimes it could also be very difficult to even distinguish um, among the three because there is usually um, an interloping way that your functions turns out to be. Uh, so and that's probably explains why we have to uh, bring therapy together. When a journalist is out there on the field covering the election, he's not only reporting the news, he's observing the, new, the, the electoral process, he's monitoring the electoral process, and he's also um, oversighting whatever we are doing and whatever other key actors are doing. So you, 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 you are doing very great work, and so I'm here to pay tribute to that. And thank you for all you've been doing since our uh, return to democracy in 1999. And we want to tell you that we are good to go. We are ready. We have all it takes, we've got the men, we've got the operational assets, sufficient boot on ground, sufficient equipment, our morale high, and um, we want to promise you and promise the people of Edo State and by extension Nigerians that we would deliver on our mandate. Our mandate is clear and it is to provide an enabling environment for a peaceful, safe and violent free election. People must realize that we are not the one conducting the election per se. Our job is to make sure we provide a violent free environment, a crime free environment, a crisis free environment for INET and other key stakeholders to also um, uh, carry out their tasks. And this, we 
want to pledge that we will do and do to our utmost best. We want to reassure the people of the two states that we will provide a level playing field for everybody. We will be politically neutral. We will be professional. We will enforce the laws strictly, firmly, but reliably. We hold people accountable when they infringe on the laws. We will make arrest where necessary and will ensure that those who go out of their way to break the laws don't go, don't go spot free. We will collaborate with all law-abiding institutions that have legitimate rules to play in this election. We will work with the military, we we'll work with members of other law enforcement agencies who are also coming in to support us. And we'll work with you. We'll work with the civil society organizations. We'll work with the media. And we'll work with the election observers. However, for those who are not accredited, and who do not have rules that are sanctioned by the Electoral Act to play. I want to seize this opportunity to warn them to stay clear of the entire process. And these set of people include, but not limited to, people claiming to be media practitioners that are not accredited. People claiming to be election observers or monitors, but not accredited. And very importantly, to non-state actors like vigilantes, private members of private security organizations, including state government-backed security outfits. They are not recognized by our electoral laws and therefore cannot be seen to be participating in the policing of the electoral spaces. We will also ensure that Key aspects of the electoral acts, for instance, the laws creating new electoral offenses are strictly implemented. In the light of that, on, on election day, we will not allow people to use sirens. Don't come to the pulling centers or pulling units blaring your sirens. Don't come to the pulling units or pulling centers wearing apparels that are branded in the logo of any of the political parties. Don't come to the pulling units canvassing for elections, for votes. Don't try to persuade or dissuade citizens from voting for anybody of their choice. Don't come there bearing any form of offensive weapon. And gentlemen of the press, for us, offensive weapons, offensive weapons do not just mean firearms. A walking stick can become an offensive weapon and be converted to weapons. We understand and we will respect our elder statesmen and elder stateswomen. We know them. And when they come to vote with those working states that are 
entirely made to support their mobility. We will accord them their respect and ensure we help and support them to cast their vote. But don't come around bearing instruments that can easily be turned into weapons, including umbrellas that you can easily turn into a spear. We will we'll be opening up our situation room, our control room at the headquarters. We function effectively as our situation room, and we'll be having not just policemen functioning in these control rooms, we'll also be having the representative of the military and other law enforcement agencies functioning there in order to uh, deepen the <coughs> synergy and our ability to process intel information and respond and react uh, within the quickest possible time. I will also be taking advantage of the situation rooms that will be opened by members of the civil society organizations and we will be collaborating and working with those situation rooms in order to be able to resolve complaints that are resolved within the quickest possible time. We will do all within our hands to also ensure that misconduct by police personnel and other law enforcement agencies that will be deployed in this election are reduced to the barest minimum. And in this regard, our roving teams and monitoring teams will also be keeping an eye on the activities of our police personnel. We we'll appeal to you to help us in check. We will also be releasing phone numbers of not just of the control rooms, but also my operational phone number for purposes of deepening transparency, accountability, and oversight of citizens on our activities during this election. And as soon as we are finishing here, we'll be releasing my own number as well as that of the control room. We'll urge citizens to take advantage of these platforms to reach us either by voice call or text messages. We will actually prefer you send us messages owing to the nature of the operations that we'll be embarking on. And finally, I want you to know that our approach to securing this process will be comprehensive. We operate on land, we operate on air, and we operate on the waterways. And we will leave no stone unturned in ensuring that we deliver, working in conjunction with INET, other law enforcement agencies, the media practitioners, the CSOs, the election observers, and other and other authorize individuals and organizations in delivering an election that we will all be proud of. And the number, my operational number for purposes of this election will be, or rather is, 70 Triple zero three eight five. 
070-25-000-383. I will equally appeal to citizens not to engage in pranks or 